it's time to save some money on food. So strap yourself in because not only am I gonna help you save some money, I'm also gonna be giving you some health and nutrition tips along the way. The topic of food can sometimes be a pretty touchy subject. I know this firsthand after posting pictures of food that I eat on my Instagram stories. It comes with a lot of baggage because there are a ton of strong opinions about how you should eat. Everyone settle the heck down because I found this amazing new food source. It's called dirt. It's everywhere and it tastes delicious. We need food to survive, but sometimes our spending gets a little bit out of control in this area. The three biggest expenses in all of our lives are housing, transportation, and food. We're going to focus on how to save more money on your monthly food bill. Hey, I'm Jared with an A, and on this channel, we like to talk about all things personal finance and investing. Let's get this out of the way right off the rip. Stop wasting your time cutting, wait for it, coupons. The first reason that I absolutely hate coupons is because the majority of coupons are for foods that you should not be putting in your mouth to begin with. Sugar packed cereals, cookies, ice cream, Cheetos, Doritos, Fritos, and soda. It's all trash and it's loaded with insane amounts of sugar and just a little bit of nutrition. The second reason that I absolutely despise coupons is because they are such a waste of your freaking time. Think about it, is a half an hour of rummaging through a buttload of coupons worth that one that you're going to find that you'll save, I don't know, 30 cents on garlic bread? I highly doubt it. Your time is worth way more than 60 cents an hour. This is just as bad as people who will drive out of their way to save five cents per gallon on gas. The third reason that I hate coupons is because you overspend in general. A coupon is just a marketing tactic to get you to spend money on an item right now. Spend money when you buy it again in the future since you loved it so much because it was packed with that addicting sugar and to get you into that store to spend even more money on all kinds of other things. And one more thing about coupons, I understand that you can get 40 bottles of jelly for $1, but what in the heck are you going to do with 40 bottles of jelly? That stuff is literally going to outlive you because you will never eat that much jelly in your lifetime. Sorry, crazy coupon people. You're not smart. You're just crazy. My tip is to just shop the sales at the grocery store and stock up on items that you'll actually use as opposed to buying something because it's such a great deal. Forget the coupons altogether. When you think about saving money on food, start with the overall thought of building structure around the whole process. Structure when it comes to the buying process and the actual consumption process of the food that you eat. My brain thinks very systematically, so this has become second nature to me. If you can solve some of the individual problems within the whole process and figure out an easy way to make them repeatable, then you'll not only save yourself a lot of money, you'll also save yourself a lot of time and headache as well. Prepping meals every week needs to become a new normal in your life. It is way too easy easy to go grab something quick to eat that the money really starts to add up. I tested out eating out for every single meal for 30 days and I ended up spending way more than double the amount that I normally do on my food budget. That little 30 day experiment reminded me of why it is so important to prep food for the week every single week. I'm going to take you into my kitchen so I can give you a quick idea of the system that I use that works really well for me. If you haven't done it already, please Hulk smash that thumbs up button. The first thing that anyone needs for a good meal prep is a crock pot slow cooker whatever you freaks want to call it but you got to get yourself one of those so there's two things that I eat with every single meal a meat and a vegetable so those are essentially the two things that I need to cook every single week now let's get into where all of the magic happens my freezer this is the brains of the operation right here. As you can see, I have a whole bunch of containers in here. Now, each one of these containers contains a meat entree of some sort that I'll prepare at the very beginning of the month. So uh, the first Sunday of the month or the last Sunday of the previous month, if that makes sense. And I've got a date on each one because I know that some of these might be in here a little bit longer than others. So I like to know, okay, when, when did I actually prepare this? So I've probably right here got about, I'd say four to five different entrees in these containers with, with these dates. Like this is a Mississippi pot roast, some pork roast, some carne asada, some homemade spaghetti sauce back there. And I've also got some pork and sauerkraut because I like to eat as much sauerkraut as like, not as much as I can, but I like to eat sauerkraut on a regular basis for the gut health the benefits from the gut health, the fermented cabbage. I'm not gonna go into it, just Google it so you understand. The only meat that I'll really cook on a Sunday is if I wanna switch some of my meals up and get some ground beef in here. So I'll pull this out on a Sunday morning and then I'll cook it later in the day and put it in my containers. The other things that I'll actually cook on a Sunday 
will be my vegetables. So what I've really been loving and crushing the heck out of is cauliflower rice. I love this as a substitute to your normal rice because I try to keep my carbs and my starchy carbs very low. I'm on a uh, low carb, high fat diet right now. So this is a, the perfect substitute. I've also got Brussels sprouts, frozen Brussels sprouts that I will cook up on a Sunday and then I'll just throw some seasoning in them, throw them, throw them in my containers with my meat entree and be good to go. Jared, what's in your fridge? Hold on, you free. I'm gonna show you. We've got a lot of water. Now, you're kind of catching me at a weird time because I'm in the middle of a five day water fast, so I've got a lot of water. I have a lot of water in here to begin with, usually these jugs, but I actually have these containers or these little bottles because of my fast, I need to drink certain water with a certain pH level on alkaline, alkalinity, whatever level. I'm not gonna nerd out on that stuff with you right now, but yeah, my, my fridge usually has a lot of water in it. I've also got some eggs that I'll fry up for dinner every now and again. And the only thing that's not in here that I would normally have is broccoli and cucumbers to kind of munch on throughout the week. The other vegetable that I'll have in here sometimes is spinach, because sometimes I'll just make salads for dinner during the week. On this side, I just have you know, your normal hot sauce, some mustard, some low sodium soy sauce, sauerkraut for the gut health. Lastly, let's check out my cupboards. Oh, there's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing. There's not much in my cupboards. And on this side, boom, this is what we've got. Tomatoes so I can make some more homemade spaghetti sauce, some avocado oil, apple cider vinegar, some peppers to put in the crock pot with some of my meat entrees, and then sardines to snack on every now and again. Love sardines. I don't eat them that often. Just be careful because when you eat them, they make your fingers smell really bad for a long time. So just don't eat them before you <laughs> go out on a date. The nutrients in sardines are really good. That's why I like to have them in here to snack on. If you'll notice, I don't have many snacks in here because if I have them in my house, I will eat them. So me personally, I can't handle it because I'm a small child and a fat kid at heart to where I can't have things to snack on. That's why I try to keep some vegetables in the fridge, like the broccoli or the cucumbers, because I'd rather snack on that than anything else. Just to re-emphasize something, choose a handful of meals and then put them on repeat so that you don't get sick of eating one thing all week for multiple weeks in a row. If you want to save more money on food, then you need to give yourself fewer opportunities to buy food. Constantly heading to the store to pick up groceries gives you a lot more exposure to those bright lights and the amazing marketing that companies spend millions of dollars on every single year. I found success with this by purchasing one month's worth of meat at the beginning of every month and only going to the grocery store once per week on the same day at the same time. And that ties into the next one, which is have a darn list before your butt even walks into the store and do not buy anything that is not on the list. Gone are the days where you walk into the grocery store without a list. Um, okay, let me think, what did I need? And think that you're actually gonna walk out of there without a carton of ice cream that some little kid opened up and licked an hour ago. Come on now, we're all adults here, so it's not difficult to rummage through your cupboards or your fridge or your freezer to make a quick list of what you need to buy right before you go or even the week leading up to your scheduled grocery shopping day. Cell phones make it easier than ever, so there is no excuse. I use the List app thingy on my iPhone and about, I'd say 1% of the time, I forget to add something on my list that I realize that I need to buy while I'm actually in the store. Quick pro tip, which I kind of feel like your mother right now. Okay, maybe not your mother, but kind of like your Uncle Jared. Eat more veggies with every single meal. Oh my gosh, Jared, but I hate veggies. They are so gross. <laughs> stop being an idiot. Seriously, stop being an idiot. You sound like my two-year-old niece. There are more than enough veggies out there to where I find it extremely hard to believe that you don't like vegetables. I mean, heck, there's seasonings of all kinds. You can just throw on those delicious things and make them a little bit more palatable. Try to stay away from the sauces, though. They can be really expensive, and they are usually not good for you. Next, I want you to keep it simple. Embrace the minimalist in you, and don't overthink it way too too much. Saving money on food is simple. Only buy what you need and what you'll actually eat before it goes bad. I've been super guilty of this in the past. My eyes are way bigger than my stomach. Try to be a little bit more thoughtful when it comes to what you're buying. Take your impulses out of the whole situation and really ask yourself if you need that carton of ice cream or, I don't know, that box of ho-hos. Ask yourself, would Uncle Jared approve of what is in my cart right now? If the answer is no, then you better put that stuff right back where you found it, little kid. Which brings me to another tip that I have. Always review everything that's in your shopping cart before you actually check out and remove what you don't need. I've done this for years and it's probably
probably prevented me from putting on an extra 30 pounds and saved me an extra $30 every trip. I've had quite a few walks of shame up and down those aisles, putting things back on the shelves that I should not have placed in my cart to begin with. It kind of reminds me of those long morning walks that I had back to my house in college. If you get that reference, then you get it. If not, I'm not gonna elaborate. The next thing that I want you to do is to start tracking your food consumption. Tracking your food isn't just for losing weight. It can also help you save money as well. I've always looked at this as being so darn annoying to do, but I've recently started doing it again and realized how it can actually save you money. I'm not even necessarily doing it to lose weight or save money, but more as a way to be a little bit more mindful of what I'm actually putting in my mouth. Yes, I just said that in the internet. Oh well. Since you have these preset targets to stay under, it naturally makes you question and plan out what you're going to eat for that day. This really speaks to me because it reminds me of back in the day when I used to play World of Warcraft and Call of Duty, and it really gamifies the whole thing. For example, it makes you realize that if you want to eat a Chipotle burrito that day, then you're probably going to have to skip one meal and eat something extremely healthy for the other one. I've mentioned this one before, and I'm going to mention it again because it's an absolute game changer. Practice some sort of fasting protocol, because the less that you eat, the less money that you spend. Whether it's time-restricted fasting, alternate day fasting, 24-hour fasting, 5-2 fasting, or a multiple-day fast. Some people gave me crap in one video because they said, uh, you shouldn't starve yourself to save money, but let's get something very clear. An intentional fast is different from starving yourself. I've been practicing some sort of fasting, mainly time-restricted fasting, for the better part of four years, and I can't see myself ever eating any other way. About a month, month and a half ago, I tried a three day water fast and actually really enjoyed it. So much that it's something that I'm gonna start doing and making a part of my normal monthly monthly routine. And right now, as of filming this video, I am in the middle of a five day water fast. For the longer fasts, all I'm doing is consuming water with a little bit of pink sea salt, potassium chloride, and some sort of higher quality unbleached baking soda. I got the recipe from a guy who came up with this, with this concoction. He calls it snake juice. I know that there are some people that dry fast, which obviously means they're not consuming any liquids at all, which means you save a lot of money, I guess, if you spend a lot of money on water, but I am not even interested in trying that at all. It sounds absolutely horrible. An easy way to dip your toe into the fasting waters if you're kind of nervous or scared is by just skipping breakfast. I promise you, if you skip breakfast, you will not die. I practice fasting because there's all kinds of benefits. Some of the main reasons are to save money, for the mental clarity, for the weight control, and the promotion of autophagy. Autophagy might be my favorite side effect of fasting, but I'm not gonna explain it, so just Google it if you're kind of a nerd like me and you're interested in learning more about that. Disclaimer, I am not a doctor, I don't play one on YouTube, consult a professional before you try any of this stuff. I never did it, but I've done a lot of research on my own and education on my own, and I'm a pretty healthy adult, so I didn't think it was a big deal if I did or didn't. I don't want you to get the impression that I'm telling you to never eat out and spend money in that area. I think that you should treat yourself to eating out every now and again, but more often it should be the exception as opposed to the rule. Just because you're trying to save some money on food doesn't mean that you should deprive yourself. If you give yourself a scheduled cheat day or days every now and again, then it'll help you stay on track during the, those days that you'd rather not spend money on food. To help you save some money, you could eat a small snack before going out to eat. That way you'll still get to enjoy that food and experience, whether it's with your significant other, by yourself, or with your friends, but still eat a little bit less and save money as well. Another good tip, which I do quite a bit now, is when you go out to eat, only eat half of what you are served, then box up the rest for your next meal. If you're not sure that you can do that, just have the server buy box up half of the meal right off the bat and tell them to just bring you out half of the meal. Not only is this gonna help you with portion control, it'll give you another go at that same meal the next day or later that day. And of course, just get something small like an appetizer when you go out to eat. Just because it's called an appetizer doesn't mean you can't have it with your main course. And don't take your own food to the restaurant. That is ridiculous and taking it a little bit too far in my opinion. While that would save you all kinds of money, you just look cheap and like an idiot. You're better better off going, not eating anything at all, or eating what's left over on your friend's plates and enjoying that time with your friends. In the description, I have all kinds of personal finance and investing playlists to help you out. Make sure to Hulk smash that thumbs up button and check out these videos around my head. I'll see you in the next one, friends. Adios.